Hey guys, how's it going? So, unfortunately, I think something went wrong with the recording and the original audio of the video didn't actually get recorded. So instead, I'm going to be doing this voiceover of the gameplay, but hopefully it's uh, fun. And yeah, let's see how this goes. So, decided to do a premiere draft of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, which is the new Magic the Gathering set. It's been a while. Uh, this is the second draft I did. My first draft was not too great, and honestly, I wasn't. I didn't even know what the cards were in that set. It was just a random one. But then I decided, you know, at least I'll look at some of the cards in the set, familiarize myself a little bit with the mechanics. Um, and so this was my first real draft, you could say, of the set. So um, here we are, just waiting. Okay, back one, big one. This is the pack we opened. We have Grasselax, uh, a fifth scholar, one blue blue. Uh, pretty good for the Saboteur deck, um, which is the one with all the rogues, where you just want your creatures to get some combat damage in your opponent, get all the benefits. It's pretty nice, I think. Um, and then we had a bunch of other good cards in the pack. There's Owlbear in green, uh, Yuan T in black. There's also a purple worm in green, which is pretty nice. It's a nice big Peter. Um, Ingenious Smith is okay for the equipment deck, I, th I suppose, I think. Um, I don't know how good it is, honestly, but maybe it could have been good. But yeah, I decided to just pick the rare and see if we could uh, make this deck work. And then, pack uh, pack 1, pack 2, we had some options. We had Eccentric Apprentice, uh, 3 mana 2, 2 flyer with some Venture Synergies. And uh, its second ability is actually pretty good with the Saboteur Thief, because if you finish the dungeon, you can get your uh, rogues through by making them flyers. Uh, there were some other cards in the deck, but they weren't too impressive. There was a contact other plane that was nice, I suppose, in our colors. And uh, Hill Gorge Giant, Basilisk in green. And uh, UNT again in black. Bar the Gate, Counter Spells, not really too impressive, I think. Well, I guess it works in some decks. But I decided to just take the Eccentric Apprentice in this case. And yeah, let's see. Our next pick, uh, the rare was Black Staff of Waterdeep that we got past, but unfortunately, this card's not really playable in draft unless you can get a crazy amount of artifacts in your deck. It's quite unlikely. Maybe you're sure playing an equipment deck, but then why would you beat blue? So I don't know. Uh, we had some other cards. There's Monk of the Open Hand, which is a single white, good card in white, but uh, it's not really too playable unless you have the Planeswalker that combos with them. There are some other cards like the white uh, equipment, aggro, beater, and you come to a river, which is a bounce card in blue. Uh, so I decided to just take it because it's in our colors and there are other good cards I could have taken like the Yuan T maybe. Ooh, I, I did decide to take the Yuan T. That's interesting. That's probably a good decision on my part because it's 2-2 that touch is a really good body for 3 and then also its benefit uh, combos with what you were trying to do, which is venture and deal combat damage. So I think that was the right decision by me. Here we get some cards. Um, nothing good in our colors, honestly. There's uh, the Fairy in blue and Fates Reversal in black. So I just decided to take Gretchen Titchelow because, um, you know, it's a pretty good card in green, blue, and we were already kind of in blue. So we could have just uh, moved out of black and gone into blue if needed. We got more green cards and we did see quite a few good green cards in those first few packs. So I decided to... Um, take my chances on that one. And here I think I was just hovering over some other cards to see what else was available. But I believe I ended up taking Gretchen. It's good enough over the fairy. Alright, and then we got this back. Again, quite a few blue cards. Nothing great in black, I think, just to our intellect, right? Uh, Aberrant Mind Sorcerers was interesting because it's 3-4 for 5, which is not a great body, but it does uh, recur one of your uh, instance or sorceries. I thought maybe that could be useful. Or what else? We had a Rhyme Shield, Frost Giant is also a good pickup, and Skullport Merchant is also good. Young T is also good. Oh, I, I think maybe I ended up picking up the Skullport Merchant here. Mm, yeah, that, 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 was the, that was a good pickup, probably. Pretty good card, 3 mana, 1 4. Gives you a treasure, so it actually costs 2. And uh, 2 mana to sacrifice and draw is also a really nice effect. 
Alright, and then this back, let's see. We had true moly polymorph, uh, 6 mana instant to make something into something else. I guess it's an interesting card if there's strong stuff on the board, but... Uh, yeah, how often will you get to do that, you know? Sometimes you destroy it, you have 6 mana. Opponent has like a 3-1 or something, you have a 2-2 two -two and you're like, um, do I really want to <laughs> change this? So I think I ended up just taking Wizard Class here, which is a pretty good card. Early game, doesn't do too much, but it gives you 3 mana, draw 2, to the Divination, and then 5 mana, the level 3 effect, which is super strong for late game. Um, which is super interesting. Looked at some of the other cards, Arcane Investigator is also an okay 2 drop if you need 2 drops. Alright, let's see, what do we get in this pack? Again, no good black cards. Uh, there's, you find some prisoners in red, but at this point we weren't close to red at all. I was looking at some of the green cards because we could have still gone into green instead of black. Um, but we let, was not really a great reason to do that. So I think I just ended up taking the two drop creature here, which is Arcane Investigator. Because um, the Villain Slayer card is also, I mean, it's flexible because it's counter spell or draw spell, but... It's also double blue, so not that great. I think I just ended up taking the Arcane Investigator here. Next up, uh, you got Plaza Treasure Vault, which is a rare, but fortunately not very playable in draft. Unless you're maybe in the red black deck, but even then I don't think you need it because it's an aggressive deck. Um, there's not much in this pack for us. I think I just yeah ended up taking. Ooh, I think, did I end up taking the ranger? Maybe. I think, yeah, I think probably in this case, ranger is the best bet, because the three blue cards I'm probably not playing. The troll's not that great, I think. And at this point, we could be in either green or black. And then this back, not too much uh, impressive here, nothing great. You see a guard approach is okay, I suppose, for our deck. Probably what I ended up taking here. Hell of Hadar is not bad. 5 mana 4 4 in black. The effect is not that strong, but it's it's a creature with the body. Oh, I think this is the fact that I, I was just trying to decide and I didn't even get to pick, but luckily there was nothing too great in that pack, so we didn't miss out. And then here I was choosing between these two cards. So there's a 3 mana bound spell, um, or steel spell technically, but. I think I just ended up taking contact on the plane because the draw spell and sometimes cry is pretty good, I think. Then here's nothing much in our colors. I could have taken wild shape for green. Fain death didn't seem too great, so I just took you come to a river. Here I think I just grabbed the pixie guide because it was in our colors. At this point I basically committed to blue, but I could be black or I could be green. The Aberrant Mind Sorcerer came back, which is an uncommon, so I ended up taking it. And then we got the Mimic at the end. We opened up Zorn in the second pack, which is great if you're in red. Like, that card is so good in red. Uh, red, black especially, where you're making all those treasures. Um, you also opened the red, white uncommon, which is super strong. But I was looking at other cards here. In green, we had the Hill Gorger, Null. Null Hunter, both really good. Blue, we had the Frost Giant. It's okay, you come to a river, it's not great. I was looking at you meet in a tavern here. Um, which has some effects, but I don't know how strong it is. It didn't seem too good. And there's some cards in black, seemed okay, like Hexblade or Coal. The white cards seem kind of unplayable. I mean, Celestial Unicorn is good, I guess, but the Dragon Disciple doesn't seem too great. I think I ended up just taking the Frost Giant here. Alright, and here we open up a Monk class, which again is not <laughs> not really that playable in draft, unless you really build around it and get it super early. Um, so here's looking at other cards. Albert is really nice in green. Uh, one of the premium commons. Fly is also really good for our um, for the kind of deck we are trying to build with our uh, rogues were trying to just push through for damage. Um, so I'm not sure what I ended up picking here. Maybe Albert or maybe Fly. Our Shortcut Seeker is also a good card in our colors. The best card in this pack is probably Dragon's Fire. Who ended up picking Albert? Interesting. Um, that's an interesting decision. I don't know what I ended up or should have ended up taking. That's probably the correct decision. 
Here we had options between Ray of Frost, Charm Sleep, some other stuff. Um, this is a tough decision. Charm Sleep is 3 mana and double blue, so I think I take Ray of Frost because it's just a cheaper version. Although, um, in hindsight, perhaps I, th I think Charm Sleep might be better than Ray of Frost uh, if I do evaluate it fairly. There were some other cards that would work with our rogue theme, like a Horde Robber. Uh, Zombie Ogre is also not too bad, but that's more of a green black deck card, which you could have been in at this point. Um, but yeah, I just ended up taking Rio Frost because we were really light on removal. So far, we have no removal in already in the second pack. I was looking at load some troll to see if it would be worth it, but I don't think so. Basilisk is probably better than troll. Um, other cards in this pack were Beholder, Eyes of the Beholder, both average in black. And then blue, we had the Ram Shield Giant, another big beater if you want. You already had two five drops at this point if you were gonna go blue green. And there's Bar the Gate. It's trying to decide what to take. Interesting, I ended up taking the Beholder, so I was, was kind of hedging my colors here if I wasn't sure which, which you would end up going finally. Um, and potentially leaving myself open to open uh, a nice rare in the third pack in our colors, maybe. And here, probably a second contact other plane is ideal. Spoils of the Hunt is a uh, decent removal, honestly, if you're going to be in Creed. But our deck was looking uh, not that sure, because at this point, I think you're kind of half committed to green, half committed to black, so. I think your best bet is to just end up taking blue cards that are average or slightly better than average and then um, not commit to green or black unless you get a really nice card in those colors. Uh, and then here I realized, oh, there I'm really lacking removal so I might as well grab this Eyes of the Beholder maybe. Um, and then this back, I was thinking at what cards we had. We're mostly being passed some red cards and some green cards. Honestly, red seemed kind of open. like. Especially this pack, we got past a lot of good red cards. We opened Zorn, we got past, I think, uh, yeah, some pretty good red cards. And then we see Red Dragon, boost of speed here. So maybe we could have uh, drafted red. Or probably what's more likely is the player to our right is drafting red. Um, because it seems like we passed a lot of good red cards to them. And we didn't see too many of those in pack 1. A Circle of Dreams drew it here, but triple green, um, not really possible in draft. Unfortunately, unless you're running a mono green deck, but that's gonna be kind of impossible unless you get super lucky and run some really bad cards. I think I'm gonna pick in the Fane Death here, just in case we needed it. Uh, these cards came back, uh, not much in our colors, so I think Hexblade is probably the best pick here because it's a 2 mana 2 2, which sometimes gives us some upside with treasures. The Fly came back, which I was kind of surprised by. Um, after he passed on it the first time when the Owlbear was there. I decided to pick it up this time because it does work really well with rogues. Uh, and that's kind of what our deck wanted to do. At least part of our deck. Um, we picked up the Bounce spell which came back. Picked up the Counter spell. Another one of those. Low. Or maybe I picked up the Mimic here. We already had one Mimic. Right, and then we picked up uh, another one of those flexible ones. And then we got Werewolf Pack Leader here in pack 3. That's a really nice start in green. Or actually it's pretty good if you have an aggressive deck and you're going for pack tactics. But to enable pack tactics you really need some beefy creatures. And at this point our deck didn't really have those. Most of our blue creatures were 2 mana creatures or 3 mana creatures. Um, and at this point I picked up quite a few black cards. So I was looking more black than green. So I was looking at other strong black cards in the back, and honestly, Reaper's Talisman looked pretty good for our strategy. With the rogues just pushing through for uh, combat damage. So I decided to pick that up instead, and hopefully um, wheel either the Shortcut Seeker or Legion Spawn. Which also have been pretty good in our strategy. We got another Reaper's Talisman, um, and then I was looking at what other cards were there. There's Green Dragon, uh, which is not the best of the dragons, but... It is uh, an uncommon dragon. Just look at other stuff, and then I saw, oh wait, there's precipitous drop in this pack. And I also I was reminded that our deck was really lacking some removal. 
And so I decided to definitely pick that up over our other options. Given that we only had one drill removal spell with Eyes of the Beholder. And a, a kind of removal spell with Ray of Frost, but Ray of Frost is tricky. And then here we got past the blue rare. And I was wondering, alright, can I take this? It's a 7 mana rare. Uh, it works with instants and sorceries, which we don't have a lot of um, in my deck. We only have like Eyes of the Beholder, Contact Other Planes, and some Bound Spells, which I might not even run. So I was wondering, okay, maybe I'll take something else. I saw Displacer Blaze, which works pretty well uh, with our Venture sub-theme. Uh, it's a decent creature. So it's kind of deciding between those two. Uh, let's see what I ended up taking here. Alright, looks like I picked up the wizard spellbook. Interesting. Well, hopefully that card pays off. Cause uh and we got past another displacer beast, which is not bad. So definitely take that one in this pack, cause there doesn't seem to be too many other great cards. It's a hex blade, which is an okay creature. Uh Vampire Spawn is actually not bad, I think. Um the drain effect can stack up if you get a lot of those. But I got the displacer beast so that uh, we could make the venture work. And then I was looking at cards in this pack. We got some blue boss to us again. Not much though, just a, a bad defender card. Uh, there are some black in this pack. Mostly just Eyes of the Beholder and this check for traps uncommon. Uh, and I already had one Eyes of the Beholder and they don't tend to get picked up too often so I picked up check for traps here. And this pack, I was like, oh my god, the green white uncommon, Tralasara, she's so good in that deck. She's actually a mini bomb, but unfortunately we were nowhere near green white. Um, looking in our colors, we didn't really get past too many good black or blue cards, so I thought, okay, might as well pick up another Baleful Beholder. Um, it's unlikely that we'd play both, but it's better than everything else in the pack. And then in this pack, we got back, we got past a bunch of decent green cards. Honestly, Null Hunter and Hill Gorger both came back, which is surprising. Maybe no one was drafting green at this table. Um, when I saw the second Eyes of the Beholder as the only good card in our colors, really, I decided to pick that up as well. And then a Guild Thief got past us, and I was like, whoa, that's a really good card for our deck. Because uh, it works with our Rogue Synergy, but it's also one of those cards that gives itself evasion. So we don't have to try to give it a vision with, with one of our other things like fly. Um, and it also can get out of control if it's not dealt with. So it's very happy to pick that one up. And then we got uh, the shortcut seeker passed back to us. I was like, pretty happy to take that. Also didn't have too many four drops at this point. So I thought, yep, might as well take that. Seems pretty good. And then a soul knife spy also came back and I was like, wow. This last pack and a rogue synergy is finally coming together. Initially, you know, I kind of started out with that theme with our first rare with Grasslax, but then we weren't really picking up all those rogues along the way. But somehow we managed to uh, at least get some of them in our deck. And so that's what I was planning to build around at this point. Um, Pure is considering going another Hexblade versus a Vampire Spawn. Not sure what would have been better at this point. Looks like I just ended up picking up another Hex Blade. Another Eyes of the Beholder came around. I was like, ooh, there's a Spare Dagger. Maybe I should take that. Because it does have some synergy with Yuangti. Because uh, of the Dead Touch. I already had two Eyes of the Beholder. And I was doubtful that I was going to be playing three. So this is what we ended up with. Or at least the cards that we had. And then I was like, okay, now I need to cut down to 40. So let's see what ends up making it. So I decided to cut out cards that I was most likely not playing, or at least I was, they were not guaranteed includes in our in my deck. And then I was going to rebalance it uh, to keep the cards that we would then play so that we could make up the deck. So basically anything that wasn't a must keep I just removed from the deck. And so this is what, the, what our deck kind of ended up looking like. Uh, 
after removing all the pieces that were not must-haves. Honestly, at this point, uh, I could have gotten rid of Arcane Investigator as well. It's not really a must-have piece, but I was looking kind of light on two drops and uh, there's a lot of aggro decks, uh, I think, in this particular set. So I decided to keep it in the deck. And then I was looking at my other cards and I was like, okay, these all work pretty well, I think. I had a nice looking curve at this point and I was like, okay, now what can I include to round out this deck? One thing I did notice was we were pretty light on removal. Uh, another thing I noticed was that we needed ways to get our rogues through for damage because remember they don't do anything unless uh, you can deal damage to the player. So I decided to include fly because that definitely enables that strategy. Um, and then I was kind of considering what else we could include to help ourselves out. Um, another thing to consider while building the deck is your creature count, whether we have enough creatures or not. Generally in your draft deck you want about 15 creatures and then uh, 7 or 8 non-creature spells and then your 17 lands. Um, in this case since you're running some early uh, blue cards with double blue symbols like a Draslax, decided to have more islands than swamps. Hopefully we draw the two swamps by our 6 drops. And then I was kind of looking at what else we could include in this deck. Um, at this point it looks like we could probably add some more creatures. Uh, and maybe some other stuff to work with our rogue strategy. Okay, so this is kind of what our final deck looked like except for one card I was looking for. The last card we uh, would need. So we had a pretty nice curve, we had some nice big beaters at the end with Frost Giant and uh, the Beholder. We had quite a few early rogues like Guild Thief, uh, we had uh, Soul Knife Spy, and we had the 4 drop uh, uh, Shortcut Seeker, and Grass Legs obviously. And we had a few value creatures like Hired Hexblade, a decent amount of removal although not a lot, not, not the good removal in these colors. We're definitely missing Grim Bounty and uh, other stuff, but we had one Precipitous Drop, a Ray of Frost, and an Eyes of the Beholder, which would have to do. We had some uh, pieces to help our to help our rogues get through, like Fly, Reaper Talisman, Manticore kind of functions as a removal spell. And then we had just had some creatures to fill the curve, like Displacer Beast, Arcane Investigator. Um, UNT Fangblade is uh, decent, also kind of works like a rogue. Actually, it is a rogue because um, it has that on damage venture text. Skullport Merchant, just a value creature. And we also had a venture sub thing with Eccentric Apprentice and the Hexblades. I'm um, oh, sorry, Hexblade helped us draw card, not the Hexblade, the Fangblades, uh, which helps us venture. Um, and then Displacer Beast as well, which helps us venture. And hopefully if we can venture enough, we can uh, trigger the Eccentric Apprentice's second ability, which helps out our rogue strategy. And then, um, as an end sort of late game win condition, I decided to put in Wizard Class and Wizard Spellbook. Um, Wizard Class, if we can get level 3, can help us get ahead on a stalled board. And with Spellbook, my hope was just um, that I didn't really have too many instant sorceries um, in the deck. Mostly contact other play in Eyes of the Beholder, really. But my hope was that since I was running so light on removal, that I would be able to copy some of the removal from our graveyard if we ever managed to resolve Wizard Spellbook um, in the late game. And potentially some stuff from the opponent's graveyard if they had removal. And uh, I hoped it would pay off at some point. So this was the deck I decided to run with for game 1. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. So. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.